Okay, this video is about the organic family of ethers. You'll see that the general formula of the ethers is R O R primed. Again, R representing hydrocarbon chains. And so there's two hydrocarbon chains on either side of a singly bonded oxygen. The functional group for ethers is called an ether linkage. And again, you'll see a COC, so a single bonded oxygen in between carbons in a, in a hydrocarbon. As far as physical properties go, considering boiling point, you'll see the ROR molecule here. So here's one ether and here's a second ether molecule. So if we're talking about boiling point, we're thinking about the energy required to overcome the attractions between neighboring molecules. No hydrogen bonding is uh, uh, available here. There is no hydrogen directly bonded to an oxygen. Carbons are bonded to the oxygen and then there are hydrogens bonded to the carbons, but that doesn't set up the capacity for hydrogen bonding. This CO bond though is polar at 0 0.9 and so with this asymmetrical shape, this bent shape, we do and you'll, you'll recognize it from water, we do have a dipole in this molecule. It is a polar molecule. And so the partially negative end of the molecule is near the oxygen and partially positive towards the carbons. That sets up the potential for a dipole-dipole interaction. And so we can expect the boiling point of an ether capable of dipole-dipole attractions to be greater than that of alkanes, where only London forces occur, but not as high as alcohols, where the ability to hydrogen bond with itself is possible. Okay, looking over here at uh, the ROR group, the ether molecule, adjacent to a water molecule, we see that the electronegative oxygen from the ether can form a hydrogen bond with the hydrogen directly bonded to the oxygen. However, it doesn't work the other way around. Water will not be able to hydrogen bond with hydrogens that are bonded to carbons. So there is some hydrogen bonding with water, but we won't see it to the same capacity that we do with alcohols. And so these are not as soluble as alcohols, but more so than alkanes, alkenes, or alkynes. It is worth noting that as the length of the R group increases, so as the hydrocarbon chains increase, we do see lower solubility in water, mainly because those hydrocarbon chains are nonpolar, and as they become a larger part of the molecule, they will be more dominant in determining the solubility. Okay, so naming, naming these structures, um, for some reason, this is a tricky one. People do find this one difficult to remember, and partially that might be because we don't do a lot with ethers, and so it's a, a smaller component of your practice. But very simply, the longest chain, I should say expose the longer chain, carbon chain, is the parent chain. And we'll just name the remaining oxygen bonded to the other R group as an alkoxy substituent, meaning side group. So if you have an OCH3, that will be a methoxy side group. If you have OCH2CH3, that will be an ethoxy side group. I realize it's been sounding a little bit like I'm doing this in a subway tunnel. However, someone's vacuuming upstairs, so I apologize for the background noise. Okay, so looking at the examples then for naming, as I slide this up a bit. Okay, so we're going to follow the rules and notice the R groups and choose the longer one as the parent. So in example A, we'll notice that there's one carbon on each side of that oxygen. And so neither is longer, so we pick one to be the parent. And so monkeys, M stands for meth, and so our parent alkane is methane. So if I'm going to name this one as the side group, then I have a one carbon bonded to the oxygen, so I have methoxymethane. Looking at example B, I have one carbon moving away from the oxygen and on the other side one, two. And so the two carbons are the longer 
R group, and so monkeys eat. E stands for eth. I have ethane. What is attached to the ethane? Methoxy, a one carbon alkoxy group. Now, if you take a look at C, a lot of people get, you know, confused or, or miss some numbering here. So I'm going to suggest that you take something you already know. For example, haloalkanes. So here we go. There's pentane. And coming off the second carbon here, I'm going to put a chlorine. So take a moment and name this. Hopefully you thought 2-chloropentane. So, apply exactly the same idea, except the name of the side group is not going to be chloro. So we number to give the side group the lowest possible number. Here's the side group. That's not chloro, but it is built on pentane. And the side group is coming off of carbon number two of the five in the parent chain. It's not a chloro though, so we'll replace this chloro with the name of the alkoxy side group. How many carbons? One, two, monkeys eat. So two, ethoxy, and that should join right over to the pentane. As you try part D, you can pause the video and then check back in. Okay, so the root here is benzene, and now we see a one carbon alkoxy group, and so we have methoxy benzene. And we do not need to number that because there is only one side group on the benzene ring. Okay, so I'm really not going to get more complicated than that with the ethers. So you can practice the textbook questions for naming and check out the worksheets that I've posted. So in terms of reactions, really the only reaction that we look at for ethers is the preparation of ethers, which we've already looked at in the alcohol lesson. So I'd like you to pause the video and write out the general equation for prepar preparation of an ether. When you're finished, check back in with the video. Okay, so hopefully you recalled that when we condense alcohols to alcohols, we form ethers. And so the general equation looks like this. Okay, if I were to create an example of that, something that might be remotely tricky, maybe I will throw in cyclopropanol here with cyclopentanol. So what do you think? Predict the products. Okay, so this is a condensation reaction. Just to remember, this is a condensation reaction. The two molecules come together and water is released, leaving us with the ether. And so hopefully you see the carbon, oxygen, carbon linkage here. You'll notice I've bent it there because we do have two lone pairs on the oxygen, which are not required to be shown in the structural formula. And that's it for ethers.